Hello and welcome to our continued uh, journey through Lent as we are penitent, repentant, forgiven, all through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We, are, we have a different setup for today because I'm trying to see uh, if the wide view that the GoPro uh, uses, which one is better. I, I like the, the live aspect, uh, but this will at least give us some kind of a comparison between the, the live and, uh, and the recorded, but still at the same time. So, as I said, we are continuing our journey through Lent. And as we continue our journey through Lent, we look at our readings. Give me one second. Jeremiah, the 26th chapter. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of, jo of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came from the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Stand in the court of the Lord's house, and speak to all the cities of Judah that come to worship in the house of the Lord, all the words that I command you to speak to them. Do not hold back a word. It may be there. It may be they will listen and everyone turn from his evil ways that I may relent of this disaster and I intend to do that I intend to do to them because of, the, of their evil deeds. You shall say to them, thus says the Lord, if you will not listen to me to walk in my law that I have set before you and to listen to the word of my servants and prophets whom I send to you urgently, though you have not listened. Then I will make this house like Sheol, and I will make this city a curse for all nations of the earth. The priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words in the house of the Lord. And when Jeremiah had finished speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak to, the, to all the people, then the priest and the prophets and all the people laid a hold of him, saying, You shall die. Why have you prophesied in the name of the Lord, saying, This house shall be like Sheol, and the city shall be desolate without inhabitant? And all the people gathered around Jeremiah in the house. When the officials of, Jer of Judah heard these things, they came up with the king's house to the house of the Lord and took their seat in the entry of the new gate of the house of the Lord. Then the priests and the prophets said to the officials and to all the people, This man deserves the sentence of death because he has prophesied against this city as you have heard with your own ears. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle text is from Ephesians, the fifth chapter. The theme in here is Walk in love. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us, and gave himself up as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you, as is proper among saints. Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving, for you may be sure that everyone is sexually immoral and impure. Who, who is covetous, that is, an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not associate with them. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are the light in the 
Lord. Walk as children in the light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel is from St. Luke, the 11th chapter, beginning at the 14th verse. This is Jesus and Beelzebul. Now he was casting out a demon that was mute. When the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke. And people marveled. But some of them said, He casts out demons by Beelzebul, the prince of demons. While others test him, kept seeking him, kept seeking a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid to waste, and a divided house falls. And if Satan also divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that I cast out demons by Beelzebul. And if I cast out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man fully armed guards his palace, his goods are safe. But when, a strong, when one stronger then he at attacks him and overcomes him. He takes away his armor, in which he trusts and divides his spoil. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters me. When the unclean spirit had gone out of the person, it passed through waterless places, seeking rest and finding none. It says, I will return to my house from which I came. And, it can, and when it comes... It finds the house swept and put in order, and then it goes and brings seven other spirits, more evil than itself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state, that, that person is worse than the first. As he said these things, a woman in the crowd raised her voice to him and said, Blessed is the womb that bore you, and the breasts at which you nursed. And he said, Blessed, rather, are those who hear the word of God and keep it. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, for our hymn for today, I decided to forego the hymn of the day for, our, for the purposes of our study here because I want to take a look at the, our recessional hymn or the last hymn uh, that we have. And I think you might know it. You might even like it. 761, Rock of Ages, Clef for Me. I wonder if we've really gone through these verses. We all know it. But have we really gone through these verses and seen what it has to say? For example, do we know what cleft means? I would say the majority of people don't, don't know what cleft means actually means cleft means to be broken or separated we we get the term cleft palate from 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 that um, I don't think that that term has been canceled yet but uh, anyway rock of ages cleft for me let my let me hide myself in thee let the water and the blood from thy riven side which flow be of sin the double cure, cleanse me from its guilt and power. That first stanza I really like, and I've preached this even when we had, even when we didn't have uh, the, the hymn on that day. Because there, there's, the imagery there is so beautiful. First, Christ is cleft, split, uh, broken on the cross and then we ask to hide ourselves in him and I picture the imagery of hiding ourselves inside the wounds of Christ because it continues on there let the water and the blood from thy riven side which flows so I just see us in that wound receiving the sacraments in blood and water and that's where we live in the wounds of Christ and as long as we are in the wounds of Christ nothing can touch us no demon no devil 
um, no, no world, no people who hate us, no one, because we are, we are uh, vouchsafe in the wounds of Jesus, and we feed on the water and the blood, holy baptism, and the Lord's Supper. So again, rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy riven side which flows be of sin the double cure. Cleanse me from its guilt and power. How beautiful that is. And then it continues. to it, it was, As it continues, it further denies works righteousness. Not the labors of my hands can fulfill the law's demands. We can't live up to the law. We strive to. We, 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 uh, uh, we follow Jesus on the, ser on the uh, Sermon on the Mount, but we falter, we fail. Uh, the Ten Commandments, we constantly fall. They're too heavy, and they crush us. And so he says here, not the labors of my hands can fulfill the law's demands. That's beautiful. Could my zeal no respite know? In other words, my zeal for the Lord continues on um, and, and, and not take a break, basically. Let my zeal uh, no respite know. Could my tears forever flow? Uh, be all for sin could not atone. Thou must save, and thou alone. Our third stanza. Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. I preach that so much. We don't have anything at all, but when we come to the cross of Christ, that's what we have. We have His sacrifice for us, and so we hold on to that cross. That's, that's another reason why I, I think that an empty cross it, as a central figure in a sanctuary is not a good idea because that cross is the sacrifice. That cross is, is where Christ was sacrificed. So we should have a corpus, a body of Jesus on the cross because it reminds us of this. Nothing in my hands I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. I got nothing for you, Jesus, but you have everything for me. And so upon, oh, I probably hit that. So, uh, so upon you, uh, your sacrifice and your forgiveness, please forgive me of my sin. Uh, and another one. Naked come to thee for dress. Helpless look to thee for grace. Foul I to the fountain fly. Wash me, Savior, or I die. Baptism, 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 baptism. That's exactly what that says. Naked I come to thee, helpless to thee for grace. Foul, meaning sinful. Foul I to the fountain fly. Baptism, baptism, baptism. Wash me, Savior, or I'll die. Baptize all of these, all of these evil things, and may the new Adam, sub, uh, uh, may the old Adam submerge and be drowned, and the new Adam raise up from the waters. While I draw this fleeting breath, when my eyelids close in death, when I soar to worlds unknown, see thee on thy judgment throne. Rock of ages, cleft, uh, broken for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Those bookends right there. Those bookends are absolutely beautiful. Rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy riven side which flow. While I draw this fleeting breath, mine eye, when my eyelids close in death, when I soar to worlds unknown, see thee on thy judgment throne. Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Let us pray.
Almighty God, you gave your only begotten Son to take upon our nature upon himself. Grant that we, your adopted children, may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Almighty and everlasting God, through your Son you have promised us forgiveness of sins and everlasting life. Govern our hearts by your Holy Spirit, that in our daily need, and especially in, in all time of temptation, we may seek your help, and by a true and lively faith in your word, obtain that you, that you have promised, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray you, we pray you, O Lord, to keep our tongues from evil and our lips from speaking deceit, that as your holy angels continuously sing your praises to you in heaven, so may we at all times glorify you on earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, without you our labors are useless, and without your light our search is in vain. Invigorate our study of your holy word, that, do, that by due diligence and right discernment we may establish ourselves and others in your holy faith. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you His peace. Amen.